Hello, it's Dan, the real estate guy, coming to you from my home office. Today I have a short video about notes and deeds of trust. I know that uh, some of you have uh, got into this program kind of like I did when I was young. Uh, you, you have a lot of enthusiasm, you have a lot of dreams, you have a lot of hope, and you know that real estate is a big ticket item that after a boom and a bust, you're hoping to do very well with it, just like I was you know, 24, 25 years ago, actually more than 25 years ago now. Right? And it all worked for me. I had to work hard, I had to develop that, that knowledge level like you're doing now. Um, some of you were excited about it. You were excited to find out that you didn't need to have a lot of money, you needed to have a lot of knowledge. And you're building that now. And you might be thinking in the back of your mind, I like that idea where you get to find the property, but you like the idea where you, you get other folks to put up the money. And uh, maybe it occurred to you about this note and deed of trust, you have a few questions about how that works. I just wanted to let you know it's very simple, right? Hey, there might be also people out there that have the money that want to fund the deals and they want to know how they're protected. All this goes into this video right here. Very simple. When I buy a property, uh, let's just use an example where I find a property, um, I write my contract, and even if I have the money in the bank, I don't have to use it. I can go ahead and, and uh, let an investor win as well. Remember, I have investors I've worked with now for close to 20 years that have money. I call it ready money. It's ready to go. They're not getting hardly any interest on that money where it's sitting in the bank. And they ask me, do you have another deal for me? You know, because they like getting paid a good interest rate that I pay. So let's take an example where, um, well, the one I just closed. Let's take an example where I can buy a house for $125,000 but I know I can sell it for $199,000, um, maybe even a little bit more. In this case, I sold for $199,000, um, and it needs work. And I have to wait for a tenant to move out. So let me go through the example of how I would use a note and deed of trust on that property. Uh, once I had the contract written on that property, all I need to do is open escrow. Um, I just need to email. In my case now, it's done by email. In the old days, it was a phone call. But I let them know. Um, in the old days, I sent them comps, you know, comparable sales. Uh, these days, I don't really need to do that. I've done hundreds of transactions with the same investors, my core investors. Um, they just need an address and the escrow information, and they'll put the money in escrow. So let's take this example where I pay $125,000 for the property. Um, and let's say I want to put a loan on it of 130000 which is what I did on this property. Um, I'm going to be putting ten dollars or $12,000 into the property. Uh, I'm going to have some carrying costs, and then I'm going to sell that property. Now, in the old days, I should tell you, for you young folks who don't have any money, and you're working with knowledge and investors, you're always going to make sure they're protected, but there is a way to do this transaction where you fund everything. In the old days, I would have probably put a loan on this thing for the 125 that I need to give the seller. I would have added on the closing cost, probably 1,500 to $2,000, so we're at 127. I would have added the, the carrying, not the carrying cost, but the fix-up cost of 10,000. So now you're at 137, and maybe I would have just rounded that off to 140. The investor then would have put up 140,000 in escrow. All right, that would have covered everything. That means that when the escrow closed, I would get title to the property and any money left in that escrow would be a check form to me or a wire to my bank. Um, I, you know, 125 went to the seller. Let's say a couple thousand dollars went to closing cost. Um, whatever was over that, I would pick up in the form of a check or have it wired to my bank. I would uh, get my contractor working on that property and pay him from those proceeds that I took out of escrow. All right, that's a valid technique, and I did it a lot when I was young because I didn't have a lot of money. I needed, I couldn't do two or three transactions at a time if I was paying all the fix-up. If the fix-up was ten grand a property and thirty thousand, I might not have had thirty thousand at that time, you know. Or even if I did, I'd be using it all, waiting for deals to close to bring it back. All right, but let's move. That's that's something you can consider if you're in that position. Um, in my situation now, I normally just like to replace the purchase money. I'll take care of the fix-up and I'll take care of the carrying cost and uh, any unexpected expenses. And I'll do that for 10 or 15 transactions at a time. It adds up. But that money comes back to me when I sell the property. Just means more money's coming back 
if I owe 125 on that property or 130 in this case versus the 140. All right, it means more money out of pocket, but more money coming back when it closes that I can use on the next transaction. So sticking to this example, the way I do it now is I, I would have opened the escrow, I would have gotten that $130,000 loan, let's say I just rounded it off. There would have been a little bit of overage, but really not much. Um, because you have the 125, um, you have the closing cost, you know, there might have been a few thousand coming out with the 130. All right. So I would owe 130,000. I happen to pay my investors 12% now, 1% a month. Um, that might be a little high. You're going to do a little research in your area. I know it might be a little high, but I work with the same folks for so long. Um, I call that a win-win, and I want them to continue winning. All right. So I just stick with that. Even when rates went down, I continued to pay the 12. All right. Um, back in the old days when rates were higher, um, I still paid 12. So it works out over time for everybody. All right, so in this transaction, the note, getting back to the note and deed of trust, it's just something that the title company draws for me. They charge around $150. You can ask your title company what they would charge. It's a very simple note and deed of trust. It's just, you know, a page and a half, basically, uh, for the note portion of it. And uh, they'll, they'll just get that done. We'll all sign that in escrow. You know, the, the investors will do their thing and put the money in. I'll sign, basically, I'm obligating myself to pay that back. The investor's protected because they have a note and deed of trust, in this case, an amount of $130,000 on a property that we all agree is probably worth $199,000, you know, maybe a touch more. So they're protected. They have what we call protection equity, about $60,000, right? Actually, uh, $130,000, they have $70,000, $70,000, I call it $69,000 if it's $199,000, right? But they have, they have that protection equity. If, if for some reason something happened to me and I wasn't able to perform, you know, I unfortunately get hit by a truck or something, right? Um, they can get title to that property and then sell that property. And they then can get their 130 back. In, in that case, they'd probably get more, you know, but, but uh, the point is they're protected and they're going to get their, they're going to get their money. All right. So title company can draw it up. It's nothing complicated for them. If you're in an area where you use attorneys for these things, I guess on the East Coast, they don't use the escrow company for it. They might hire an attorney. I have used attorneys on large notes before on large properties. And instead of being a page and a half, I think it was about eight or nine pages long. You know, It's very rare for me to use an attorney, but on a very large transaction, sometimes it's necessary. But it's very rare for me. I like to keep things simple, keep it win-win all the way around. Everybody's winning or they shouldn't be doing the transaction. And uh, I just let the title company take care of that. Now let's look at another version of the note and deed of trust. Remember, this is the one you're going to like if you're operating with a, a small amount of money and you're trying to keep your cash flow under control, which you'll need to do if you're doing multiple transactions. If you're doing one at a time while working a job, it may not be as critical. But think about this concept. A lot of people miss this one. How about a single payment note? I may have mentioned in another video uh, as a matter of fact, on this property, we used a single payment note. That just means the investor doesn't need a monthly flow. He doesn't need that $1,300 a month on $130,000. You know, he wasn't using that money for income before. It was just sitting in a bank. He's okay with the interest occurring or building up. And then all paid in a single payment note. It just means you're paying one time. You're paying at the end of the transaction. He knows going in. Uh, and by the way, I have all my investors sign a one-year note. i got a whole year to get this deal done. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. I'd love to get it done in 60 days. But my average with the industry problems right now is probably 120 days, maybe even 130 days. Um, and you can look at that video on industry problems. Um, it's kind of dragging some deals out right now. So I give myself plenty of time to perform. It's rare for me to own a property more than six months when I plan to buy and sell it. It happens once in a while when it falls out of escrow a couple of times or whatever, or you buy a property that has a tenant in it and you have to end up evicting them. It's rare, but it can happen. So you give yourself plenty of time to perform, so there's no concerns there. You've got a whole year. Um, if you use a single payment note, you're still trying to go as fast as you can. You're still paying the same interest. You're just paying it all when you sell the property. Now, you also remember that I pay my investors a couple of points. A point is 1% of the loan. So the gentleman that did this transaction, putting in 130000 
I think if you look at that um, video, it's the one called Sequel. Um, he put in 130 and he got back 137 and some change. I think it was 137,600. He was quite happy with that. You know, I got a phone call thanking me for the transaction and wondering when the next transaction is. So this week I'll be trying to buy another one and if I do, I'll let him fund it. He wants to get that money working again. So a single payment note, no different than a regular note and deed of trust other than the fact that you don't have monthly payments. You can pay it all when it closes. So in this particular case, um, I helped a buyer buy. Someone was referred to me. It didn't go on the market. They, they needed a property under 200. That's why I sold it to them for the 199. Perhaps I could have gotten a little bit more on the retail market, but why take that chance? You have a buyer that you can make happy. You can do a win-win. You know, they had been beat out on many transactions, could not get a doggone house in escrow. You know, they were frustrated. So when they were referred to me, my property wasn't on the market yet. My note and deed of trust was on there, single payment. I'm waiting for a tenant to get out. By the time they contacted me, actually, they were out, and we had just taken all the junk out of the house. They looked at it before it was done, and they decided that they wanted it. So we completed the work. Um, they process their loan, they get approved, um, then their lender puts what we call loan documents into escrow. This is the second escrow. The first one was to get the note and deed of trust on there. The second escrow, which I use the same title company, after all, they just insured that property. Let's, let's not have any complications. You know, we don't need to go to another title company. Um, they just insured it. They've just done the research. It's easy for them then to insure for the new buyer. So we just go right on through. There's going to be a payoff demand, what's called a payoff demand, put in by the investor. The uh, title company will help them fill that thing out, make sure everything's correct. But basically, the title company has a copy of the note and deed of trust. They know what I promised to pay this guy, right? They're looking right at it. So they can make sure the payoff demand is correct. I owe that guy interest from the day it closed before. I owe him that 1% a month all the way through the transaction. And then I owe him the two points. So they'll figure out what that is, get the, the note holder, the investor, to sign an agreement saying that's what he's owed. When the transaction closes with the new buyer, he's getting back his 130000 that he put in that original escrow to put the note and deed of trust on. He's getting his, uh, his interest for the time period and he's getting his points. And now he wants to do another transaction. So a note and deed of trust is very simple. I know that excites a lot of you young folks that are like I was uh, when I was 24, 25 getting started here. And you knew that, hey, you know what? If I can find the knowledge, if I can get it all together, and then I can become an expert in the marketplace understanding values cold, and I can get a property low enough to where I can show an investor comps. Remember, I don't have to do that anymore. But with the beginning, you've got to show all the way through that this thing is rock solid. You've got to do it right. So you're going to show that investor the comps. If it's a local person, um, you might even get in the car with them and drive the comps. Let them see the market. You know, this one, same model, just closed for $199, right? This one over here closed $189, this one closed $205. You know, you're, you're taking them around, you're showing them to them. You can tell them how many days on the market. That makes him comfortable to do that note deed of trust for 130000 on a property he's pretty confident that every, if everything went wrong, you know, for you, you know, the prices took another drop down, you'd still be okay. You'd still be able to sell that property for far more than what the note is. And that's really all they need to know. The other thing that a note holder is going to be concerned with, and you're taking care of that for him by working through a title company, he's going to get a preliminary title report. He's going to get a report it shows that there's no other liens in front of his note. Remember, he's getting a note and deed of trust, which is a loan on the property, which is in first position. There's no other loans. There's no other liens. It's got to be clean. He's got to know that he's in first position. If you, for some reason, renege on this whole thing and they had to foreclose on you, they would then own the property and they would then sell the property to recoup their 130000 plus their everything else, and they'll get it all. Because if they own that property, they're probably going to be able to sell it for retail value. So you're going to make sure they're protected and they're winning. You're going to be able to explain that. You have to know this concept well enough to communicate it. Um, if they have any questions about title, you're going to direct them to the title company. They'll get those questions answered. But they're getting title insurance. You know, you're going to give them a lender's policy that you pay for right through escrow. That's why you have to figure some closing costs, right? Um, 
first note in deed of trust, they're protected. You might give them updates as you're doing the transaction. Um, let them know what's going on. Let them know when the work's done. Let them know when you're selling it, when you get an offer, and when it looks good, he'll get a payoff demand. Thing will close. They'll get paid back. The investor won. Your buyer won. If you gave them a great transaction, you should. Always make your buyer win. Um, they'll tell their friends and family, hey, this guy sold us a house. It wasn't on the market. You know, it's a good story. You know, and you win. And now you're off to the next transaction. So that's your note and deed of trust. Very simple tool. Something that investors use. I've used them for years and years and years. I'm looking at my board. There's 15 properties over there. I'm pretty sure every one of them has a note and deed of trust on it. You know? So I use it all the time. It's an excellent tool. It allows you to do more transactions. In this particular case, let's say you had that 130000 to work with, but you had another opportunity. This is, I use this technique a lot for myself. I buy with my money, but if I have more opportunities, I might as well replace my money if it makes sense to pay that guy to let him ride with that property for that 120 day period, I can take that money and go buy another property. So you can use this technique if you don't have the money. You can use this technique to replace your money if you do have the money. So it's just a wonderful tool, very straightforward, very simple, but a lot of people don't think about it. Right? The conventional thinker thinks he needs to go out and spend a long time getting a conventional loan and jumping through all the hoops that it takes. I'm here to tell you that it's better to pay more, to make people win, and to keep things simple, straightforward. All right? Nothing complicated. Just nice and straightforward, nice and simple. It always comes back to you. Do you know values well enough to where you can buy low enough to where it makes sense for everybody and everybody's winning? And the answer should be yes. Once you get through all of these videos, you might have to go through more than once. There's going to be some advanced material coming. Um, and there's going to be some up-to-date material as the market changes. So I'm happy that you're a member. I want you to use this stuff. Remember the note and deed of trust. Very powerful tool. All right, I'll see you on the next video.